This video is brought to you by the Battle Zoo Bestiary, a new book with over 100 award winning monsters and other resources from Paizo lead designer Mark Cypher. Sign up today at kickstarter.rollforcombat.com and join the campaign when it launches on August 31st. Hey everybody, Dave here with another Pathfinder rule reminder for you, and today I'm going to be answering a few questions about the Disarm Maneuver. Disarm is part of the athletic skill, it is an action that takes one action, and when you perform it you attempt to take a held item away from a targeted opponent. When you do so, you roll your athletic skill against their reflex DC. On a critical success, you knock that item out of their hand and it falls to the ground in the same square that, that that target enemy is standing. If you're standing adjacent to them and you still have an action left that turn, you can bend over and pick up that item and seize it that way. On a success, you don't knock it all the way out of their grasp, but you do weaken their hold on it and this imposes a negative two circumstance penalty to any attacks they make with that weapon or any other skill checks they roll that involve that item um, that they might have to have a firm grip on in order to, to succeed and it also grants a plus two circumstance bonus to your future attempts to disarm that target of that item again. Now both that bonus to your disarm checks and that penalty to their attacks and other checks using that held item, those are until the start of the target's next turn. Now on a failure with that skill check, nothing happens, you, you just fail, and on a critical failure, then not only do you fail to knock the item out of your opponent's grasp, but in doing so you somehow fall off balance and you are rendered flat footed until the start of your next turn. Now, a couple of things that we should probably unpack here. Uh, first, the bonus and penalty that is uh, received by you and imposed on them when you succeed, but not critically succeed, with a disarm attempt, those are circumstance bonuses and penalties, so they're typed, which means they do not stack. Another thing to keep in mind is that by default and by raw, the penalty that's applied to the target after a successful disarm attempt, it is until the start of their next turn, which usually means uh, that that penalty is only going to apply to any reactions like an attack of opportunity because at the start of the next turn it's assumed they're just for free going to tighten their grip again on that weapon and uh, not face any further penalties for to being almost knocked out of their hand. Now there is a swashbuckler feat called Disarming Flare, and what it does is it extends the duration of those penalties to the end of his next turn, instead of the start of, of that target's next turn, or they can sacrifice one of their actions to make that tighter grip on their weapon and remove their penalties before the end of that turn. I have seen online, it seems to be pretty popular, fairly popular, that uh, some GMs house rule to just make the disarming flare feat the universal rule for everybody in their game on disarm attempts. That's house rule territory, but it seems to be fairly popular for some of the folks who believe that the uh, disarming action, the disarming maneuver by, by Raw is a little bit lacking and they want to beef it up a little bit. A question has come up about disarming a shield uh, that is a held item and disarm says that you can uh, use it to, to remove a held item, but there are other complications that pop up when using shields and so I want to walk through a couple of different options and things that might occur, but it's ultimately going to be up to your GM and, and how they view the usage of shields in their game as to whether or not uh, each of these things apply. So the first thing to, to think about is the reflex DC of that shielded target. Uh, some GMs out there say that if that shield is raised, then they are going to allow the bonus of that shield that usually goes to armor class to be applied to that target's reflex DC when resisting a disarm attempt. Uh, there's nothing in Raw that says that, that's just one of the things that some GMs do for trying to disarm shields. A GM might also decide that that shield is strapped so firmly on the target's arm that it's just immune to, to disarm attempts and it cannot be disarmed. There's a lot of debate about 
whether shields are strapped or not, the only shield I'm aware of that specifically says it is strapped is a buckler, but that doesn't mean that other larger shields are not sh strapped and held. Long story short, each GM can decide for themselves whether or not shields are strapped by default and whether or not that makes their their wielders immune to disarm attempts. But for the sake of discussion, let's say the GM decides, yeah, you can attempt to uh, disarm this uh, enemy of their shield and you roll a success. What does that mean? Well, it means you're going to get a plus two circumstance bonus to future attempts to disarm that shield before the start of your target's next turn. And it also means they're going to be suffering a negative two circumstance penalty to any attacks they make with the shield, like a shield bash. And they will also suffer a negative two circumstance penalty to any checks made with the shield th that requires that target get to have a firm grasp of their shield. So that raises the question of, well, do does this mean that uh, they suffer a penalty to their armor class because you've knocked their shield out of their grasp, and uh, even if they're not fully disarmed, they're not able to hold it uh, as clear and soundly as they would normally be able to do. By raw, no, there's there's no penalty to their armor class. Armor class is not a check. Uh, it is a type of DC, but it's not a check, so by raw there's no um, penalty there. But this is one of those areas where GMs are allowed to manage circumstance bonuses and circumstance penalties however they believe are appropriate, so it is absolutely within a GM's uh, right to be able to say on that disarm success they're going to apply the circumstance penalty to that target's armor class to represent the fact that the shield's been knocked a little bit loose and it's not being held as firmly as is ideal for protecting oneself. And then on a critical success, what happens when you're trying to disarm a shield? Uh, again, up to the GM. If they believe that the, the shield is strapped on firmly and immune to disarm attempts, then obviously they don't drop it. But the GM could also rule that uh, either they're not strapped on the arm and therefore they do get dropped, or they could say, you know what, you rolled a critical success. Let's, let's do something fun with that and say that your disarm attempt cut through the strapped and knocked it loose and it fell to the uh, floor, to fell to the ground in the target square just like a normal critical success on a disarm attempt but that's it in a nutshell it is a use of the athletic skill you roll your athletic skill check versus your target's reflex dc on a critical success they drop the held item and it lands in the in, at the ground at their feet in that same square if you only succeed but not critically succeed then you get a plus two circumstance bonus to future attempts to disarm the target of that item and they suffer a negative two penalty to attack with that item or to use it on any other checks that require you to have a firm hold of the item until the start of their next turn and on a critical failure you not only fail to disarm the target of that item but you also render yourself off balance and you are flat footed until the start of your next turn. As always, if you have any suggestions for future rule reminders, please let me know in the comments of this video. I'll make sure to leave links to any other relevant uh, topics that talk about disarming or other uses of the athletic skill in the description of this video. And as always, I want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everybody out there for watching these videos, for commenting, for liking them, for subscribing to the channel, subscribing to the Patreon. Thank you so much for everything you do to, to support me and this channel. And thanks for watching. Take care and happy gaming.